In consulting with people and helping them design infrastructure into their new construction homes, we've really come to the conclusion that a lot of times it is forgotten about. When building a home, people tend to focus on the pretty things, the stuff people are gonna see. What kind of floors are you gonna use? Are you, what are you gonna do for landscaping? Will you have a pool? Does everything match? Paint colors, just all the stuff that people are gonna see. And while that stuff is really, really important, we would also make the argument that having something completely functional and having a nice network and infrastructure in place is equally important when you get to the big move-in day. Nobody wants to move into a home, hang a bunch of TVs, and nothing works because the internet company came and installed your router in the corner next to the garage, nowhere near anywhere where you need Wi-Fi. So today, it kind of got me thinking, if I was building a house right now, what kind of cabling would I include? Would I put in RG6 coax cabling? Would I use CAT6, which has been the standard for the, about the last 10 years? Would I upgrade to something like CAT 6A? So I thought we'd talk about it today. Let's break down some of the benefits of each and talk about when or when you might not need something like that so that when you get to your new construction project, you kind of can have a game plan. We honestly feel that the type of cabling that you pull in your home is really determined by your needs. Take coax, for example. Kind of an old-fashioned cable to in today's standards. Not a lot of people are using it. And in a lot of homes where we go in and help cut the cord and move to streaming, we're abandoning in it. There just, we're just isn't a big need to use it in a home for TV anymore. However, if you are not the type of person who's gonna rush out and go to streaming and you like having a physical cable box, um, pulling coax cabling in your house may be necessary. Now, I will argue that a lot of the cable companies like Cox and Charter and Spectrum and DirecTV have moved to more of a wireless set-top box, which basically their boxes connect to one of their router devices in, their home, in your home and they send the signal to it wirelessly all the box needs is power and a connection into the TV. However, in helping people, we've talked to um, you know, a lot of them who have said they've had problems with that kind of box. And it worked way better when they had a cable hooked up to it. So if you're building a new home and really streaming just isn't in the, in the cards for you or it's just not gonna be in the picture, maybe you live in a rural area where you just don't get fast enough speeds to, um, you know, to stream and you're gonna be forced to use something like DirecTV or Dish for your TV, I think it's probably worth spending the money um, to pull some RG6 coax cabling to your TV locations. Um, typically for our builds, if you're the type of person who is gonna be streaming and you're not gonna be reliant on having a cable box, we still will pull a cable from the DMARC area outside where your cable comes into your home to your network head end just in case there is a need for a cable modem um, that physically plugs in with this kind of cable. That way we can get internet where we want it. Next, let's talk about CAT6. Now, ethernet cabling is a very versatile cable. You can use it for stuff other than just network connectivity, even though when we pull it through homes, a lot of times that's what we're using it for. We want a physical, hardline connection to our TVs, to our offices, to our printers, things like that, to get them off of the Wi-Fi network. And I'm a huge advocate of that. I think the more things you can take off of your Wi-Fi, the better your Wi-Fi is going to function. There's just nothing that can really compete with a physical cable. But is CAT6 still the standard we need to be looking at? Now, to answer that, Again, I don't want to give you the cop-out answer, but again, your needs really do determine whether or not you need something a little bit more beefy or bulky or faster than traditional CAT6 cabling. I would argue that most people's needs do not require faster than one gigabit connection in your home. Our typical everyday user is streaming, gaming, getting on the Wi-Fi, work calls, VPN, 
traditional, normal online surfing, and there really isn't a need to have faster than a gigabit connection throughout your home, okay? Even if you have a gigabit internet connection coming in, you're not using all of that internet connection unless you have a very specific and special job function that requires it. So I would argue the point that most of you out there, most of you traditional internet users could be just fine on a Cat6 cabling from here in the next 20 years. And we know a lot of architects and, and um, job functions of that nature where they're pulling these giant as-build you know, uh, drawings down and having that faster speed just makes that a much pain, uh, painless process. Um, when you're talking about uh, inside the home, moving large files, again, is also um, a need that where you might need something faster than a gig. Although I would argue that you can move files pretty fast over a gigabit connection locally on the LAN. It just, it's, it's faster than a lot of people think, but because faster speeds are offered, we kind of get blinded by the bigger numbers and we think we need it. And I just don't think in most cases, even trying to think 10 years down the road, I just don't think that's gonna be a case. The, gig, the gigabit connection is really fast. So let's talk about the limits of a Cat6 cable as it pertains to just general usage. Okay, so a Cat6 cable is actually rated to go one gigabit in speed over the distance of 100 meters or around 330 feet or so. Okay, so, you know, in when pulling riser cable throughout your home, whether you're doing Cat6 or whatever, Typically, people are not pulling lengths or distances greater than 100 meters. Now, if you have a network head end and you're trying to get connect to a detached garage and you have a conduit between the two, you know, you might flirt with it in a case like that. But typically, cables run throughout a home are not going to exceed that. So what it really boils down to when you decide to make the leap from Cat 6 to something like Cat 6A or Cat 7 is do you need 10 gigabit speeds or think you'll need 10 gigabit speeds. Next, let's talk about something like CAT6A, which would be the next jump up from a CAT6 cable. Now, the big benefit of making that leap is going to be that you're going to get 10 gigabit speeds over the distance of 100 meters. So before where you were limited at one gig, now you can get up to 10 um, 10 gigabits of speed over that same distance. However, this is going to add some costs. Making the leap going from CAT6 to CAT6A is going to add some cost to your build. So you might be best um, if you approach it in sort of a hybrid approach. And that's probably how I would look to do it if I was building a house today. There are a couple areas in my house where I could see pulling CAT 6A to be beneficial. My access points would be one of them. The newer Wi-Fi standards like Wi-Fi 6E, we know Wi-Fi 7's coming, uh, who knows what's gonna be available in the next 10 years, are running at faster speeds, which means the access points themselves actually require a faster physical connection into the network. So we're we're prone to ubiquity you can see we have some behind me i have ubiquity access points in my house i really like them they have some inter enterprise level access points right now that actually have a 2.5 gigabit ethernet connection in the ap that allows and helps that ap handle larger speeds because i have cat 6 wiring in my home i would not be able to take advantage of those faster speeds now again the situation dictates this do i need that no, I only have a 300 meg internet connection anyway. So I really can't even take advantage, even with as many devices I have connected simultaneously in my house, I don't feel that I would be able to take full advantage of having that faster connection because I just don't move stuff around back and forth in my network over the Wi-Fi. I pretty much use the Wi-Fi to get to the internet. So kind of going back to my hybrid approach, if I was building a house right now, I would, and that's kind of future-proofing myself, right? So I'm thinking from this point on, I would probably look to run CAT 6A, maybe even CAT 7, depending on price of the cable, to my Wi-Fi access points. 
Um, another place I may run it would be to my office. For example, if I had, maybe I take a job and we have some kind of a local file server and moving stuff back and forth, or I'm hosting something for someone, it would be nice to be able to put something hosted in my office or stored in my office and be able to have a 10 gigabit connection to it. I don't really know that that would really fit my needs or I'd have a need for that, but just on the off chance that something like that could happen, I suppose I would maybe choose or a lot to run a bigger, faster cable to that location. The other place I would look to maybe upgrade a cable in this hybrid situation would be my main TV in my basement and my main TV on my main floor. I just feel that as if I was to upgrade to something like 8K or whatever's, you know, 10 years down the road, and maybe those TVs do require a faster connection or TVs or Roku's or whatever we're streaming on in those days, um, have a faster connection like a 2.5 gigabit um, connection or a five gigabit connection on the back of them, I think having that bulkier cable there would benefit from me. But my bathroom TV, my garage TV, my TV in my office, I just don't see the need to watch 8K while I'm, you know, in my garage. I just don't feel the need for something like that to really benefit me. So like I said, in my case, I think I may take a little bit more of a hybrid approach. And on the subject of thinking of the future, since none of us have a crystal ball, even though I, you could tell by the comments that I get on my TikTok videos, people think they do. Um, it's just one of those deals where I would also look to probably future-proof those areas as well. Maybe pull some Smurf tubing like this to those locations so I could potentially run fiber to them or run Cat 8 down the road in, in just the off chance that technology moves so darn fast that even CAT 6A and 10 gigabit speeds aren't good enough anymore. So you're building a home and you're wondering, what should you do in your home? Guys, I really encourage you as you're thinking of all the pretty things and thinking about landscaping and what kind of shrubs you're gonna want outside, um, I'd also encourage you to think about how you use technology today in your home. Most people want good, strong Wi-Fi coverage throughout the entire house. They don't want dead spots. Nobody wants a dead spot. And today, the only way you can really combat dead spots, if unless you have something built in your home, is by going and buying a mesh system. Now, a lot of us rely on those mesh systems, and they're out there, and I have people that say very good things, and why would you spend any money on this when you can just go spend the money on a nice mesh system? And to each his own. Everybody kind of has their own... Um, way of thinking about that. And if that is you, great. You don't need to worry about any of this Cat 6A or Cat 6 business. Just use your mesh system and, you know, um, stream that way. However, I just think there's a, there's a need to just sit and reflect and kind of think about how you use technology. Because if you can put a hard wire somewhere where you're really going to benefit from it, like a TV, like an access point, like an office, I think it's worth running. And during the building process is the cheapest time to do that. Whether you work with a builder or you're pulling the cables yourself or you have a subcontractor doing it or even a buddy of yours is doing it, it's nice to go in with a plan and say, I want to drop here, I want one here, I want one here, I want one here. As a matter of fact, as a segue, we have a checklist that we, that there's a link in the description down here, that it's a free checklist that basically allows some suggestions as to potential places you may want network drops in your house because there's areas that people forget about. If you want to take an additional step and take this further and you like what we're talking about, I've actually built a guide called Ethernet Blueprint, the complete planning guide. And it is designed to really walk you through this process about how to plan the wiring in your home. From the DMARC location in your house where the internet comes in, to having the cables pulled a certain way on your network head end, to future proofing, to even designing what your Wi-Fi would look like in your home. So if that's something that interests you and you want to design a house that's not only pretty, but also functional, I encourage you to take a look at that. So hopefully this gives, this gives you a little bit of insight about cabling. Um, just know that whatever you choose, Cat6, Cat6A, Cat7, there's gonna be some costs associated with it. And because Cat 6A and Cat 7 are a uh, bigger, bulkier, newer cable, it is gonna cost more to run those. 
So if your budget is really tight, like a lot of new construction is, just kind of be ready for um, that approach if you decide you need um, really strong 10 gig wiring everywhere. And if you do, that's great. Just plan for it in the budget because it is gonna cost more. Hopefully this helps you guys. If you're interested in the guides, take a look. They're there for, for your benefit. We really do wanna help you with your project. Um, if you have questions, reach out, leave comments. I'm trying to make these videos to help the person who's building a home think of the things they need to think of. So hopefully we'll hear from you. Thank you for paying attention and we will see you in a future video.